What's going on, y'all? It's J.D. Pakel today on The Hard Count. J.T. Daniels, could he be headed to West Virginia? We'll discuss next. Welcome in to CFB with JD, the people's channel for every single thing that you know and love about college football. It happens on this channel, happens nearly every single day, so would encourage you to subscribe to have you along for all of the good times that will continue to roll here. Armstrong Sims, Jack McKenzie, they do the real heavy lifting and y'all drive the show. JT Daniels, former five-star uh, that was at USC, transferred to Georgia, led them to a New Year's Six victory. He's in the portal. Okay, it's just kind of the way that this college football, uh, what's the right word, uh, ecosystem has decided to treat four and five-star quarterbacks. Something crazy like 60% of these five-star quarterbacks are now in the portal at one point or another. But JT Daniels is in the portal after, obviously, Georgia winning the national championship under Stetson Bennett. Looks like there may be, a, you know, a quarterback they've landed on there in Athens. So the five-star is looking for a new home. And there is a lot of different, you know, top videos out there about, hey, JT Daniels should go here, here, here. Here's his top landing destination. Here's one that I don't think is being talked about nearly enough. The country roads that will, in fact, take him home to West Virginia, Mountain Mama. It makes all the sense in the world to me for him to go to West Virginia for a number of reasons which we will unpack. But the first and probably the most prominent reason his old offensive coordinator, Graham Harrell, is now the play caller in Morgantown. Meaning, uh, the coach that he has, I would assume, a solid relationship with, a coach that he understands and knows how to run his system effectively. He had a pretty solid true freshman season at USC. He could step in there day one and know how to operate that offense. I'm not saying he couldn't step in other places day one and be effective and be able to win the job and all that. He can be comfortable the very first day in Morgantown, meaning he can step in there and practice one, tell that receiver what he's doing, tell this running back, this is what protection you have. Offensive lineman, this is what you need to make sure you're checking to if they bring pressure. That is so huge. I mean, I cannot stress enough. As a transfer quarterback, that is so huge to have the command of a playbook right when you set foot on campus. In spring practice, wherever he goes, he's going to have to get acclimated to his teammates. If he goes to West Virginia, he won't have to get acclimated to the playbook, meaning he, he'll be able to, to, to be up to speed, like I've said here, in a variety of different ways. There's going to be a lot of new things wherever he goes. Might as well check one off the book with the playbook and then check one off the book in your former offensive coordinator. So what else is attractive about West Virginia? Obviously, like we just now mentioned, coordinator, playbook, huge. Step in day one, you're comfortable. Another thing we should consider, they're likely going to mold their offense around whoever the next quarterback is. If it's JT Daniels and he has his old head, uh, you know, offensive coordinator calling the plays, he's going to know how to mold the offense even more so to his skill set. Because like I said, there's growing pains whenever you transfer. You're going to have to, you know, like I said, get, get acclimated with uh, the system, with the coaching staff. But the, the coaching staff also has to get acclimated to you. They have to figure out what do you do well. You throw this well. You throw the, the, the deep game not so well. Okay, we'll put more of this in the playbook into our game plan. That's all erased if he steps in there in Morgantown because Graham Harrell knows how to play to his strengths. He'd be able to uh, maybe work the portal a little bit better, be able to train in the offseason with these receivers a little bit better. So you're just cutting out a lot of the trial and error process that you'd have to go with uh, for both these guys, both Harold and Daniels. There's going to be a lot of things they would have to do if they don't find a perfect marriage together in Morgantown. And so I think it makes all the sense in the world. And for both of these guys, it's a means to an end to a degree, right? Graham Harrell, I would assume at some point or another, this is probably a big assumption, he would like to be a head coach. In the shorter term, he would like to establish an offensive identity at West Virginia. JT Daniels goes to West Virginia. I think he probably has two years left with one good season. Could easily see him go into the NFL. So for Graham Harrell, JT Daniels comes in, has a good season. West Virginia is now an offensive destination. Okay, meaning receivers want to come there. Running backs want to come there. Uh, you can recruit the quarterback position easier. For JT Daniels, he wants to go to the NFL and make all that money that he was told he could probably make when he committed as a five-star to USC. Ever since JT Daniels was in middle school, 
saw him up close in the seventh grade. He's been groomed to be an NFL quarterback. So maybe his degree says West Virginia. I'm not sure if he's actually a graduate of UGA. That's uh, my bad on that. He's not there to he's not there to play school. He's there to go and get into the NFL. And I think West Virginia with Graham Harrell gives him the best chance to do that. So it's very much a win win for both of these parties. The very last thing that I think makes West Virginia potentially the best destination for him is that he would more or less get all of the credit if he plays to his potential and makes West Virginia a power in the Big 12. Because we've seen it. The right hire can make a big difference. The right quarterback in that conference can make a huge difference. Just ask Oklahoma how they were doing with Spencer Rattler and then how they finished with Caleb Williams. The, the, way, the metaphor that I see in this situation is this. If you do a group project and you have two kids that aren't necessarily stellar students, you're going to do the group presentation yourself, right? You're going to go up there and you're going to give the speech. You're going to go through the talking points. How much more credit do you get as the person that carries that presentation with two kids that aren't great students as opposed to two other AP students, right? Just think about that for a second. If JT Daniels goes in and blows it up in Morgantown, they're going to be pointing at JT Daniels and say, wow, that guy is an amazing quarterback. We need him on our football team. Insert NFL program here. He will be the guy that gets all the credit. And that's going to even more so up his draft stop, up his um, potential for being a first round pick, which I think he already will be, but probably puts him a little bit higher in some of those mock drafts and the real draft when it's time for that to happen. If he goes to a place like Ole Miss, the system's already in place. Lane Kiffin's already got that thing humming. I know it's a new OC. He's kind of stepping into the shoes that Matt Corral had, right? Same thing goes Notre Dame. Yeah, Jack Cohn was good. Marcus Freeman and, and, the, and the, the offensive staff is already there. A lot of things are built out. They're accustomed to being successful. Ole Miss had a good offensive season a year ago. You go to West Virginia and make them a competitor, put them in some leaders in statistical categories across the country, JT Daniels is getting all of the praise and recognition and the hype and the accolades for making them such. So in summary, it helps JT Daniels because he's comfortable day one. It helps Graham Harrell and JT Daniels because they can play to each other's strengths and take out some of the guesswork and get this thing humming sooner rather than later. And then finally, JT Daniels, if you win in West Virginia, the world is yours, and everybody in the world will know that you made West Virginia a power, and that's going to help your draft stock. That's it for us here in the Hard Count. Follow me on Twitter to stay up with everything we're doing here. Subscribe to the channel, better yet, to stay up with everything we're doing here. We're going to keep the party rolling, and we will see y'all next time.